So alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency really requires two things. One, you have to document uh, a low level of A1AT circulating in the patient's blood. And then once that's done, there are many different reasons why that level can be low. So we have to then reflex to another test in order to verify that there's some sort of genetic mutation that's causing the defect, that's causing the A1AT to be low. And so in the past, the, and still this gold standard is still running this out on electrophoretic gel. So A1AT, the patient's serum is put on an electrophoretic gel. It's uh, electrophoresed and then stained with an anti-A1AT antibody and then visualized. And from that pattern, we usually get a phenotype of the A1AT. This new test is, is quite different in the fact that we're actually then going in with mass spectrometry from what's called a bottom-up approach, meaning we take the patient's serum, add some trypsin to it, digest all the proteins that are there, and we look for those peptides associated with A1AT mutations, and then we're actually detecting those, which allows us not to have to use the gel in order to find these things. So the gel can be sometimes subjective, as you can imagine, that A1AT bands can migrate slightly differently uh, depending on the electrophoretic conditions, but, but we're using the mass spectroscopy approach that we're using. We're actually uh, getting multiple levels of detection. So it's done what we call in an MRM mode, which means we uh, take the digested peptides, put them through a mass spectrometer. We're looking for the mass of the mutated peptide associated with the, the S and Z phenotype. And once we detect that mass, then we fragment it to verify that it is indeed that uh, peptide that we're looking for, the mutated peptide. So in the end, we actually have multiple levels of, of detection, so we can be absolutely sure of you know, detecting the, the, the mutation is actually there and present, and it's a little less subjective than the gel in that regard. Secondly, the other thing I find that's kind of interesting about this new test is it does give us some better sensitivity. Uh, if you look at just the A1AT concentration that's done by nephilometry, and that's an antibody that detects all types of A1AT, mutated, non-mutated, but uh, this test can actually somewhat differentiate between the mutated level and the non-mutated level, and by doing that, even though we don't offer that as a clinical test, by doing that we've shown that some of the patients who are heterozygous, especially for the Z mutation, actually they produce very low levels of circulating uh, mutated protein in their serum, causing sometimes the gel maybe not to be able to detect the Z band, but we're using mass spectrometry we've shown that we have improved sensitivity over the other methods.